Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the differences between fighter generations and what they really mean as far as mission efficacy goes. So what we have here is we have the lovely uh, state of Connecticut Stan. Uh, they've broken off again. Apparently there was this uh, row about the New England Patriots and the Yankees and the Red Sox and it just got serious and all of a sudden they had a bunch of military equipment and said nobody can come here anymore. So what they've done is they built themselves a little no zone around the state and uh, they're going to defend themselves with a wide variety of all sorts of interesting museum pieces here as well as SAM sites, cross uh, guarding radars, there's all sorts of really good stuff, there are visual sensors, pretty much everything's ready to go down here. And what we're going to Try to do is we're going to try to strike at this particular uh, lovely state and some of its uh, very very high value targets in it of course the real high value target would actually be down here at the naval submarine base you get a hit on this thing you get like nine submarines for free that's really hard to recover from on the flip side uh, hitting an airbase and blowing a couple airplanes you can replace those pretty darn quick so uh, we're going to strike the airbase because we're stupid like that so as far as resources we have on our side here uh, we have a kc-135 as well as an e3 to help us out and going up to uh, portland where our little air base is going to be located here we have 12 f-16s to help us out with this and again f-16s aren't the end-all be-all but so that's kind of the point of the scenario so i built a relatively straightforward strike uh, there's not a lot of weirdness as far as the actual like organization of the strike goes basically we have six strikers and we have uh six escorts if you want to kind of think about it visually another way so here comes everybody you can see uh, we've already uh, identified several of their damaging uh you know kind of interceptor aircraft have already launched here we go. So the party begins. And um, this is what I love about modern warfare is uh, basically they exchange missiles like this until one side runs out of missiles. <laughs> it's just the way to go. Now, of course, your tactical brain's going, why did you not come in at low altitude? Why are you not doing standoff jamming? Where are your decoys and all those other kind of fun standoff things? Um, I'm not going to do that because that's not going to demonstrate my point correctly here. This is a very foolish way to go about this attack, but you'll actually be surprised how successful I can be even with an F-16. Of course, all the sand batteries are quickly wrap. Oh, lost another one. We are rapidly going through um, all of the surface air missiles that can possibly be launched at us. Oh boy, here we go again. <laughs> it's so much fun to watch. It's like a bunch of bees. And if you wonder what that big scattering is uh, that you see right there, they're basically attempting to refuel there. And uh, some of them probably got a little bit of gas and uh, the rest of them are going to make their strike here. Oh, there we go. We got one striker through and the striker got splattered, uh, which is unfortunate. We did hit the air base though. Here comes the rest of them. Uh, they're running in here. Again, they're trying to do uh, their best job to escort the strikers. I'll get my mouse out of the way so you can watch this absolutely. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> That's so fun to watch. It's just like, wow, you just shot off about $75 million worth of taxpayer money and didn't achieve anything. So, of course, um, I needed a lot more refueling for this mission, but that's okay. They're going to try anyway. So they're still spamming at each other, and uh, the mission's over, as you can see. Now, what you probably observed is not a lot of F-16s got through. And as a matter of fact, if I were to load up my losses and expenditures here, you'll see I lost half of my total F-16s here. I went through, oh my god, those things are expensive. Total losses here, um, nothing. Uh, they didn't lose anything. As a matter of fact, if we were to switch to the other team real quick. Uh, open up a red and i did run the scenario several times i actually had one where i didn't lose a single f-16 and i did a lot of damage to the airbase but if i look down here you'll see um looks like we damaged an access point and that that's about all we have to claim for it again the defenses were too thick some of you of course will say hey why don't you just order them to just charge and not dodge the missiles because they'd all get splattered that way it would it would be pretty bad so let's go ahead and reopen the scenario again real quickly here Pop this one open real quick. I'll switch to blue team. And what we're going to do is we're going to make an adjustment here. I'm going to go ahead and I'll pause my mission here because right now I've got all these F-16s on it. So I'm going to eject them from the mission. I'm going to disable the mission real quickly here. And let's see what happens when we flip the table a little bit and bring in a next generation higher of aircraft, a fifth generation aircraft, the F-35. So I'm going to come in here. Actually, the best thing is press control F6 for those of you who are following along having some fun. We're going to keep it nice and simple. We're going to go with the F-35A here. Again, we're not going to do anything too crazy. We'll go with the, uh, d -d 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 what's the one I like? I like this one right here, 2019. Uh, call sign uh, ghosts. Uh, why not? Kind of a thing. We could technically go with 12 here, but I'm going to go with all 24 to show you the difference. So I'm going to bring this up. We'll do the same thing we did last time. We're going to grab 12 of the ghosts and we're going to order them to go ahead and be our strikers. Now we have standoff weapons, which gives us a lot more safety as far as shots. We also have these things called SDBs. Um, SDBs are awesome because they're very, very small and slightly stealthy. They also have a really, really good reach and uh, they're really, really good weapons for this. So I'm actually going to go with the SDBs. We get eight of them, which is awesome. So let's go to our escorts here. I'm going to go ahead and take up, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five five six uh, ready arm we're gonna go ahead and take a look what do we have for escorts hmm well we have b61s that's certainly a pretty effective weapon here we have j which are really good at this and we have paveways 
we have no Amram, or not Am, we do have Amrams, what am I saying? What we do not possess is any harms, which means you need something that has reach. SDBs are actually almost optimum for this particular task here, uh, because they've got a lot of reach, and they actually work really, really well for this. And that's one of the things I find kind of ironic about this weapon here, is if you take a look at it, it's got a 60 nautical mile range. The approach here, the JSAL, which I really, really like as well for things like this. If you look at this, it's also about a 60 mile range, but it's not nearly as stealthy. Uh, for the purposes of comparison, we're going to go ahead and go with the JSAWs here because reasons. And then, of course, my last group here, these will be all basically combat air patrol aircraft here. So let's see here with internal only. Let's see here. We can do the 9X, which is, let's see, that's 4 and 2. Yeah, we'll do 4 and 2. That sounds good to me. Looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good. Fantastic. So we're much less specialized this time. So watch what happens when we run the same scenario. So let's go ahead and grab, toss everybody into the bin here. Actually, this is the dumb way to do that. Please don't do that next time. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure only the ones that we actually need are programmed here. So a 1 uh two and do we need three four five uh let's see here six seven eight nine and we're gonna do 10 11 12 10 11 12 you guys are going to be my strikers uh this is a cool and of course we can grab the rest of them now these are going to be the ones you're going to add as escorts but unfortunately i did everything in the wrong order give me a second all right, now we can mark them as escorts. I did that backwards. You always do the escorts first, and then you add in everybody else. All right, looks good. So we have 12 and 12. So this is a very, very different sort of strike package. We have aircraft that are fabulously stealthy. We have very long-range weapons. And uh, we also have the ability to drop things from so far away, the SAM site might not see anything. Now, the cool thing here, and I think you'll find this kind of interesting, is how unlikely we are to actually succeed at our mission, regardless of all these shenanigans. Uh, we'll take a look. All right, let's do it. Everybody's spinning. There goes the escorts. Uh, everybody's going to start launching in a few seconds here. Unless, uh, let me double check my mission parameters here. Uh, let's see here. Let me give me a moment. Aha. Uh -huh. It helps if you make the mission active. I knew it was something simple. All right. Let's go ahead and unpause, pause, pause, unpause. And I'll let everybody do their thing here. Ooh, 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 ooh. There it goes. Everybody's taking off. This will be interesting. Now, remember, the F-35 is a pretty optimum package for things like this. Go ahead and slow down time here. We're getting the uh, shakies, but that looks pretty good to me. There we go. And you can see you're getting those uh, two-minute pulses there, almost exactly, like one-minute pulses, I should say, based on, you know, kind of the search profile. Uh, what's this guy doing? Where are you going? Oh, yeah, that's right. They only have to go this far. You'll notice now the uh, party starts once again. And uh, one of the things I think you'll find so fascinating is if I do switch to the red team real quickly here, you'll notice that we know there's plenty of hostiles up here, but we're not confident where they are, which is interesting. And the second thing is you'll notice we're just picking up the missiles now before we're really picking up anything else in the party, which is a huge tactical difference compared to what we saw the first time. We don't have to get nearly as close. You know, one of the best weapons are the ones you don't need to use. An interesting thing is these are the big AMRAMs. These are the really big ones. So these things have fabulous range. And because the F-35 has got that very low detectability radar, this poor MiG-31 isn't even going to know it's been shot at until all of a sudden an AMRAM taps it like that. So this is already a drastic change in the way that this is shaken out. Whoop, somebody got a missile off. It always happens. There it is, there it is. I like how all the F-35s are like, go, 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 go. And they're all running away at maximum speed. I don't blame them. One of the things you'll appreciate here is all those SDBs that I launched are actually on the way. The other thing you'll love here is the fact that this uh, probably MiG, uh, what is this, MiG-35, doing the best he can to shoot as many of these down before they actually get down. And you'll notice they all got splattered uh, before they got close to the target. So we'll go ahead and speed up time a little bit here. And you'll see everybody heads back. Uh, they break off their attacks and everything like that. I think everybody at this point is probably uh, either going to be our escorts kind of a thing like that. Excellent. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at our losses and expenditures this time. And um, this is kind of amusing. We didn't lose anybody. Good, good. We fired about 24 AIM-120s. I don't want to know how much those are expensive or how much they cost. We fired off a bunch of SDBs. We shot down six planes. Cool. But you'll see total damage here is basically minimum. Uh, we did very, very, very little damage to the target because all of those standoff weapons were all shot down. Now, of course, if we went back to our F-35s and traded them out with LGBs, we'd have a slightly different response to what would have happened here. Uh, you would have noticed that we got a little bit closer to our target, but we also would have been putting our F-35s in bigger danger. That just gives you an idea of how challenging this can be. Now, as a zinger, of course, uh, we have to do this the fun way to end. What, you thought I was going to use lasers or something? Nah, we're going to use a B-52. So this is one of the most fascinating things of all, and I kind of hinted at this earlier, is that 
It doesn't work well. Uh, it's a too well defended of a target to use regular standoff weapons. You need something a little special. So uh, what I've done is I pulled out the B-52 here, and I know that's not a comparison between the two generations, but it does a great job of proving my point. So I'm going to go ahead and pause time here, and uh, we're going to be nice and irritating. I'm going to press Control F1 on, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, select all of these targets throughout uh, lovely Connecticut here. Go ahead and target that one. I'll go ahead and target this one. I'm using the decoy, by the way, if you're not sure what I'm clicking on here. And uh, this is a neat little decoy. It's a stand-in OECM one, which uh, works really, really well. It's a nice and irritating because it jams as well as basically circulates and uh, tries to do things. I'm basically sprinkling these all around Connecticut now. Looks good, looks good. The people in Connecticut to stand will never know what hit them until they hear it. So now that we've done that, so we're going to go ahead and uh, kick up things a notch here. Let's go ahead and uh, target our original targets here. Again, trying to be somewhat fair here. Let's go ahead now. Uh, I think it's, uh, there we go, there we go. Uh, let's see, what do we want? Actually, we can do this the easy way. I'm just going to go uh, Shift F1 here, click on this one real fast. Oh, I have so many things to pick from. Uh, let's see here. Each one of these is going to get one of these. Let's go ahead and allocate. That sounds pretty good to me. Uh, we've got the ammo bunker. Each one of you guys, that's going to get me six of those total. And you know what? I'm not really a big fan of the SA-21. I feel like it's a kind of a dangerous target, but unfortunately, I cannot see it. Uh, we just have the tall rack. We don't actually have the SA-21. It's too well buried. But you know what? While we're at it, let's go ahead and hit that guy too, because, you know, no reason to be stingy. Let's see here. We'll fire one of those. And um, let's see here. Uh, we might as well be very disproving of the sub base here as well. Uh, submarine pier. Ooh, that sounds like fun. Cool. Now, these are JASMs. Uh, these things are basically stealth cruise missiles. And it's an interesting experience. And uh, one of the things you'll notice is uh, my B-52 has basically dropped his entire rack there. I can actually delete the B-52. And the thing you'll find so fascinating here is uh, the way these work. Each one of these devices, uh, basically traveling at high altitude, my actual cruise missiles, which again, I didn't take 25 minutes to program each missile with the most precise and efficient way of doing things. But we have all of these jammers coming in at the same time. So when we switch to this team, we get this wall of noise essentially coming in. You can see very clearly that as everybody runs up, everybody's got jamming on. And uh, this is just an amusing little thing here. So all these weapons are coming in. All of our lovely, uh, you know, MiG-25, we don't have any of those, uh, MiG-31s, uh, we got the Sukhoi 37s, or 27s. They're all rushing in, and they're doing the best they can to basically chase these things down. Uh, we identified two of the JASMs. Everybody's basically scrambling to go running after the JASMs as fast as they can. Uh, we can see how they've lost sight of them, and then the jammers are jamming the other side of the jammer, jammer, jams. Maybe it's preserves. I think we're really dealing with preserves here, not jams. And you will notice we have struck the target perfectly. As a matter of fact, you can see we did substantial damage to the target. Uh, not only did we do substantial damage to the target, but um, if I hit this button real quickly here, uh, no, that one already struck. Yeah, we our missile already actually annihilated the pier. And if I actually zoom in here, you can see that oh, it's gone. We basically dented it up. If there were any subs attached to it, they would have gotten uh, pretty badly wrecked there. So you can see we have absolutely utterly disorganized everybody. Now we send in the F-16s and things would have been much more interesting for us. Let's go ahead and take a look at our losses and expenditures here. Uh, this is all it cost us. And yeah, that's about as much money as all the F-16s did. Losses, uh, we got a couple MiG-35s for free on the ground. We also got 12 Sukhoi 27s for free on the ground. We didn't get any of the subs, sadly, but we also got one of their radars. So as you can see, even though we have that incredible technology and you can see how all the technology, it all gets the job done, each really set has its own kind of things you have to do well. Otherwise, it doesn't work at all. Enjoy.